while Lin Yun was killing all the small monsters, suddenly, they all flees the spot for some reason. Lin Yun wonders what happened all of a sudden to them. Then Su Mu Zhu tells him that she sees two suns in the black fog. But Lin Yun after taking a look at it tells her that they were not suns but rather some big monster's eyes. Wang Lin who was shocked to hear that and wonders just how big the monster must be. A huge lizard comes from the front fog at them. They were all looking so small in front of it. Wang Lin who tells Lin Yun that they should all run away as soon as possible. But Lin Yun clears him that the monster in front of them was at least a beast king level, and they cannot escape it no matter how much they try. Then they notices that the monster was staring at Lin Yun. Lin Yun knew why that was the case. It was because it wanted the small dragon he had. But he was not ready to give up on it just like that. The big monster lizard opens its mouth and sucks in all the black mist at once, and then releases all of it with force towards them. Lin Yun releases nuclear breath against it. It was enough to mobilize all the energy of the stored energy crystals which was enough to kill Lord Level monsters instantly. He was hoping that it should be able to counter the attack for a while. But they all sees that it fails miserably. Then the little dragon decides to do something as well. It also sucks air and release fire at it and then Su Mu Zhu also decides to help them. And together they manages to defend against the attack. Then the big monster sucks again and the little small dragon flies in the pressure towards its mouth. It closes its mouth thinking that it got the little dragon but was wrong as the little one manages to save itself. And then it strikes the big monster in the neck so hard that it penetrates in. The little dragon tries to leave but then the big monster grabs it with its tongue and was about to swallow it. The little dragon was trying its best to resist it. Then Wang Lin who asks Lin Yun if he wants to fight the big monster alone. Looking at the small dragon, Lin Yun replies that he promised himself that he would raise the little dragon, so he cannot leave it there alone. He knew that the little dragon won't give up the fight and run away on its own. So, he had to do something to save it. Su Mu Zhu back him up by telling him that no matter what decision he makes, she will support him. Then the rest also agrees that they cannot die there without fighting for Lin Yuan as they were all friends after all. They all then leaps up and strikes the big monster all at once. Then Lin Yuan takes out his special crystal to use it. He remembers how weak he used to be. He trained so hard desperately so that one day he can become stronger than anyone else. But now someone was trying to take something away from him without his permission. He did not want that to happen at all cost. No matter who was in front of him, a human or a beast king monster, he was not afraid of anything now. He eats the crystal and then starts transforming. He becomes red from blue and starts getting bigger. He becomes twice his size and was looking very dangerous. He was still smaller than the big monster in front of them. But now he was ready to fight it head on. He knew that only one of them will leave alive. He now shoots a red atomic breath from his mouth. Su Mu Zhu tells others that it was his trump card. The nuclear breath hits the big monster and it actually injures it badly. Wang Lin who knew that it was a battle out of their caliber. Song Lan tells him that he should go back first without getting affected and she should be able to help him a little. She releases her wall frequency. It helps Lin Yuan to resist the big monster's blow. The big monster gets frustrated and it releases the black fog attack again, but this time aimed at Song Lan. Lin Yuan comes to her rescue by taking the hit on himself. He warns the monster to not do anything silly like that. Song Lan wonders what was the level of Lin Yuan at that point. She wonders if he was now a beast king level. The way Lin Yuan was fighting with the monster, it was looking as if he was already a beast king level. While wrestling with Lin Yuan, the monster bites his hand and when Lin Yuan releases another nuclear breath, the monster quickly steps back and releases its black mist attack. It causes a huge blast in the collision between it. Su Mu Su was worried about Lin Yuan. He was not looking in very good shape. But then she sees that the monster was burning in red hot flames and it was seeming as if Lin Yuan had won. But then suddenly a purple dark aura forms around the monster. Lin Yuan wonders if it was healing. He knew that he cannot allow the monster to recover back. Lin Yuan was about to release another nuclear breath, but then Song Lan tells him that the monster was not actually a Beast King level but was now evolving into the Beast King level. She proposes that they should take advantage of it to run away. In simple terms, it was previously the Lord level 9 star peak. So, if the monster breaks out of the cocoon, then it will be a lot more stronger than before. So, Lin Yuan also proposes everyone to leave the place. They all starts running away, but then all of a sudden, they hears a cracking sound. It was looking like the monster was coming out of the cocoon. Lin Yuan was shocked to see that and wonders how did evolution happen so fast. He tells everyone to be careful as the monster was now coming out slowly. Lin Yuan feels that its aura was not stable probably due to rush of evolution and its previous injuries were also not fully healed. But after entering the Beast King level, 
he definitely was stronger than before. Lin Yuan was doubting that he has any chance of winning that fight anymore. The monster was now flying up in the sky with its wings and releases multiple black mist balls at them. Lin Yuan again takes it all on himself and protects the rest but it damages him severely as well in the process. He was stunned to see the power of a beast king. Song Lan asks Lin Yuan if he was okay. Lin replies to her that he will still protect them. The little dragon also gets onto the shoulder of Lin Yuan and was looking eager to take part in the fight. But Lin Yuan tells it that even if he has not raised it in vain during that period, it should run away. He tells the little dragon that there was no need for it to die in vain with him there. He was ready to use all his remaining power to fire another red lotus pulse, even if it fails to kill the monster. All he wanted was to buy enough time for everyone to retreat. Su Muzu was in tears and tells Lin Yuan to stop. Wang Lin who also tells Lin Yuan to not take such reckless action. But Lin Yuan makes another red lotus pulse to fire at the monster. He thinks that it was his last thing to do and was feeling grateful for making such amazing friends. He tells them all goodbye, but then suddenly they all hear some voices from the mist. It was the Su Di along with Wang Jinzi's father. Watching them there, Lin Yuan was finally relived. He comes back to him human form and then faints there on the spot but still he was at least glad that they all together saved a life. The giant monster was still left to deal with. Su Mu Zhu rushes to Lin Yuan to see if he was okay and Jinzi was waving at his father to ask him to help them. The principal was angry that the kids could not even handle a baby crocodile like that. He was even more ashamed of his own son Wang Ting who could not afford to humiliate even them. Jin Zi asks him if he was even understanding what he was saying. Then Jin Zi's father tells Su Di that it was amazing that the monster could reach that level. He then asks him if he wants to take care of it or he will have to enter into the matter. Su Di tells him that he would like to do it. Then he transforms into his beast's soul form which was a giant red dragon. Everyone including the monster was shocked to see him. The monster was in fact trembling in fear. He fires another black mist balls at him but Su Di dodges them all and emanates a very hot fire from his body. It was so powerful that Lin Yuan and others could feel the heat from afar away. The monster turns around and starts running away. But Su Di leaves no opportunity to get it back and torture. He then attacks the monster with his fireball and burns it down. Su Mu Zhu was shocked to see how vulnerable the Beast King level demonic dragon crocodile was in front of the Red Dragon Emperor Su Di. Jin Zi tells her that he was indeed very strong and it would have been great if he was his father. Meanwhile, his father was actually listening that and asks him what was wrong with his own father. Zi was shocked to see him all of a sudden and asks him when did he came down. His father asks him when did he started recognizing other people as his father. Then Su Di returns to his human form. Then Jin Zi's father tells Lin Yuan who is now in a terrible state that they all should be grateful to him as it was only because he resisted for so long they all were alive. Su Di also calls him an amazing student. He asks them how did Lin Yuan do it with an E-level beast soul against a beast king level monster. The principal replies that he does not know that either but he was sure that his future was bright. Lin Yuan was unconscious. He tells Su Di to wait until he wakes up. The rescue helicopter arrives there soon after that and the officers tell Su Di and the principal that they will take the students to the medical center fast. Su Di thanks them and tells them that they will be doing some scouting to see if there was any other danger. Thus, everyone sits in the helicopter and gets going. They were all glad that they made it. The little dragon was also alive and was still there with Lin Yuan. But the officers thinks of it as a threat and were about to hit it but then Jin Zi tells them that it was Lin Yuan's pet and it has no ill intentions. Then the principal Wang Ting arrives as well and tells the officer not to do it. Jin Zi asks him if he knows about it. Wang Ting replies that he does know from the drone's broadcasting and he made his ashamed many times in it. But then Wang Ting asks them if they even know the origin of the little dragon. He tells them that it was most likely transformed from the crystal core of the Black Dragon Emperor. Everyone was shocked to hear that it was part of the Black Dragon Emperor Nidhogg. They asks Wang Ting if he means that it was Nidhogg in a way. Wang Ting replies that he would not lie to them about such matters. Jin Zi asks him what should be done if the little dragon was actually the reincarnation of Nidhogg. Wang Ting replies that it does not matter what he says alone so a final meeting will be conducted soon to discuss on the matter and take a decision. Then Song Lan tells the Wang Ting that Wu Xuangu, Lai Qingnan and Yuan Lian were separated from them. Wang Ting replies to him that the army has already gone to search for them. Now that the black fog was gradually dissipating and the beast tide was receding, he assures Song Lan that nothing will happen to them. CD also adds that the black fog incident will be classified as confidential by the Ministry of Education and will not be spread easily. He asks the officers if they got him. 
the officer replies that they will obey his orders. Meanwhile, in the Dragon Bone Mountain range, Wu Xu and Gu, Lai Kingnan and Yuan Lian were still fighting a lord level monster with immunity to poison. So, Wu Xu and Gu was having problems with attacking it with his poison. He was arguing with Lai Kingnan about it. He tells Lin Kingnan that he need to obey whatever he says as he was the captain. Lai Kingnan replies to him that actually Chu Tani was their captain and he was sure that if he was there with them then he would never suggest to run away with tails between their legs. Yuan shouts at them both and tells them that as they were fighting an external force, they cannot place any internal orders. Wu Xu and Gu asks him if he wants to go against him as well. And the Lord Level Beast catches to them and starts shooting acidic fluids from its mouth to them. It hits Lai Kingnan. Wu Xu and Gu laughs and tells him that even God does not want him to live. The Lord Beast stares at Lai King Nan for a while. Lai King Nan wonders if he was going to die there. But the black fog disappears from that area as well and the spider also runs away. Yuan runs to Lin King Nan and tells him that they were safe now. But Wu Xu and Gu was not happy about it as he was running away after abandoning Lai King Nan. He turns back to his human form. He knew that Lai King Nan was sure to break up with him now. So, if he survives then all of his previous activities will be known to the principal. So, he was thinking about dealing with Lai King Nan right there. Thus, while Lai King Nan and Yuan were distracted, Wu Xu and Gu thinks of stabbing Ling from the back with a knife. Then they hears from Yuan's wrist device that the distress signal has been received and military beast soul masters have been dispatched for soul masters have been dispatched for rescue. The current distance was 5763 meters. The team tells them to hold on there for a little longer. Now that the team was arriving and knew that Yuan and Lai King Nan were alive, Wu Xu and Gu had no option of killing them at all. On the other hand, Lin Yuan finally comes to his senses after some times in the hospital. The nurse there tells him that she will bring him some hot water. After that Lin Yuan asks her where was he. She replies that it was the medical room of Yenching University, and he had been in coma for three days. He was shocked to learn that he was unconscious for so long. She tells him that the doctor said that he was mentally and physically exhausted, which was why he was in that situation. It was early of him to wake up in just three days, she says. Lin Yuan realizes that the effect of entering the Red Lotus form was far greater than he speculated. He asks her how were his friends. The nurse replies that all the students of their school were doing fine and had already started preparing for the next stage of the arena battle. However, there were a lot of casualties in the incident. Only one person from Jinan Beast University and Huatian Beast University survived and has withdrawn from the competition. And because of that huge loss, the next round of competition was also postponed for 14 days. Lin Yuan knew that facing monsters close to the Beast King level, it was a narrow escape from death. It was a pity, but it was also a cruel truth that every beast soul master were destined to face. Then the nurse asks him if he knew why the monster was targeting them. Lin Yuan asks her if it was not because of Xiao Hong. She was shocked to see that he already knew it. She tells him that Principal Wang Ting said that the little dragon was most likely the reincarnation of the black dragon emperor Nidog. Lin Yuan could not believe what he heard. He tells her that the black dragon emperor was dead for hundreds of years. She replies that after its death, his monster crystal core had never been found. Centuries have passed yet no evidence of it. Lin Yuan asks her if they think that Nidog crystal core was transformed into the young little Dargan. He asks her what were they going to do with Xiao Hong. He was afraid that they might use it as a guinea pig for research. She replies that she personally does not know but the principal Wang Ting told that he will talk to him after he wakes up. Lin Yuan concludes that they will definitely separate him from Xiao Hong and gets angry. He pulls out the saline needles and tries to get up from bed. He asks her if she can help him to apply for a temporary discharge certificate from the hospital. She tells him that he should not go anywhere as he just woke up. But Lin Yuan tells her that she knows what kind of person he was. He cannot sit around if his pet was in danger. He goes straight to the training room where he starts cultivating again. He was weak currently during the growth period. He sees that he actually fell back to second star level of Beast King and his weak state lasted for 127 days. It was really miserable. Zio tells him that he at least already have the prototype of the domain, as long as he recovers from the weak state. His strength will be greatly improved. Lin Yuan wonders how will he solve his weak state. He certainly did not have the time to wait for 127 days. Zio tells him to just use evolution points. It did a calculation and as per it, he needs 62.5 million evolution points. Lin Yuan tells Zio that it was too much. It was enough for him to break through directly to the Lord level. But the National Freshman Friendship Competition would continue and he must regain his strength as soon as possible. 
he then reads in the system that the Red Lotus form was relying on swallowing a large amount of nuclear energy in a short period of time to help the host forcefully enter the form. Lin Yuan asks Xiao in shock if it means that he need to obtain a second micro-nuclear reactor before he can use the form again. Xiao replies him that he is smart and tells him that he also have two more powerful skills, Red Lotus Pulse and Red Lotus Atomic Breath. He asks Xiao with desperation if there was any room for negotiation as he was poor in his current state. Xiao replies him that it was determined by the system and there was no room for any negotiation. It reminds Lin Yuan that he still had a lot of inferior beast soul crystals to use. So, he decides to go back to the starting point. That night in the hotel, Wang Ting comes to his room to meet him. He tells Lin Yuan that he had been waiting to meet him for a long time. Lin Yuan was acting formally but Wang Ting tells him to relax as what he did with make a almost beast king level monster was amazing. Lin Yuan replies that he was forced into such a desperate situation where he had no other choice and then finally the principal and Su Di took care of the matter. Wang Ting asks him how did he do that. Lin Yuan replies that they just got lucky. Wang Ting laughs and tells him that he can keep his secret. He tells him that his strength regressed so much that it seems that he paid a huge price for it. He asks Lin Yuan if he wants to take another medicinal bath as a compensation and reward. Lin Yuan finds it hard to believe. Wang Ting further rewards him with a Beast King grade crystal core. He adds further that Su Di and he will further give him another crystal core of Beast King grade later. Lin Yuan thanks the principal heartily. Wang Ting tells him that he also have some selfish motives, so he need to recover quick to make the city stronger. He tells him that it was a pity that after the survival battle, their Demon City University was only ranked fourth among the famous schools. It was really funny and generous. Lin Yuan promises him that it was just temporary. Wang Ting asks Lin Yuan to be their biggest trump card in the tournament. Lin Yuan tells him that the fact that he can come to the principal represents his determination. He tells Wang Ting that he will go all out. Wang wishes him best of luck for it. He was about to leave but then Lin Yuan asks him if he really thinks that the little dragon was reincarnation of Nidhogg. With a serious look, Wang Ting replies that after testing, they found out that the cub was 99% similar to Nidhogg and contains a lot of energy. He tells him that if it fully grows to its full form then it will become a second black dragon emperor. But then he tells him that he has obtained the adoption rights of the cub and no experiments will be done on it. Lin Yuan was relieved to hear that. He thanks Wang Ting for it. Wang Ting tells him to recover quickly and prepare for the battle. Lin Yuan promises again that they will win the tournament. Wang Ting was relieved to hear that. Meanwhile, all the officials were scared of Xiao Hung. On the other hand, the wolf man calls Lai Lao Gui and meets him. Lai Lao Gui tells him that he admires his courage to decide to meet him in a place like that as they were in the open sky. The wolf man replies that if it were not for his troubles then he had no need to rush to see him. Lai Lao Gui tells him that Nidhogg's recovery time was much earlier than expected and it was not his problem and also he knew that Wang Ting and Su Di had already taken actions. They considers themselves lucky that they could not realize that it was a man-made accident. The wolf man tells him that they must be more careful in the future. Lai Lao Gui replies that he still does not understand why the cult wants to revive Nidhogg in the national competition. The wolf man asks Lai Lao Gui if he really thinks that his plan was just to revive the Nidhogg. He tells him that their real goal was the national competition. They wanted to take advantage of the resurgence of Nidog at the same time. He wanted all the geniuses to be buried in the dragon bowed mountain they were about to create. Lai Lao Gui was shocked to hear that. He tells him that it will become the darkest era in the history of Beast Soul Masters. He wanted the new generation to create a fault. The next morning, Lin Yuan goes for the medicinal bath and drops the three Beast King grade crystals inside it. He was feeling too luxurious. He gets inside the bath and gains 15,000 evolution points from it over a period of five days. When he gets out of the water, he was a lot better than before. He asks Zio to open the personal attribute panel. While Lin Yuan was checking it, Zio informs him that 60 million had been deducted from the evolution points to use for him to relieve himself from the weak state. He asks Zio if more than 20 million evolution points should be enough for him to break through to the Lord level. Zio replies that it surely will be. He then starts spending 1 million each for various attributes. But Zio stops him and tells him that his current attributes had reached the peak of the Beast King level and cannot be further improved. So, he needed to break through the current Beast King level. Lin Yuan was wonder why he cannot break through to the Lord level after reaching the critical points. Zio replies that its understanding in the field was not deep enough. Lin Yuan asks if there was any other solution. Zio tells him that he has two options, either to use 5 million evolution points to enhance or understand the thing by himself. 
Lin Yun sees that he had no shortage of evolution points for the moment and the realm of perception was the key to breaking through to the Lord level. He tells Zio to spend the 5 million evolution points to enter the secret realm. Zio obeys him and the secret realm unlocks for Lin Yuan. It was called the secret realm of killing. Lin Yuan enters the ream and on landing there, he opens his shirt and throws it away. He was ready for the challenge. The system tells him that his senses and understanding has been enhanced. It was all feeling the same as the stimulated battlefield in his previous exam. Then here hears some sound and at once a lot of lizard monsters appears in front of him and attacks him. Lin Yuan transforms into his beast soul avatar and goes for a big killing spree. He was now a mixture of blue and red scales and starts crushing all the monsters one after another. One monster tries to bite him on the neck but he shoots nuclear breath to kill them. That realm was made for killing. So, Lin Yuan was not holding back. He remembers what the demon dragon crocodile did by creating an aura around it. He tries to imitate the same. He sees that the lizards were shocked to feel his murderous intention. He calls it killing power. But the shock alone was not enough for him to use everything in the field. So, he wonders if it was possible to do it. He wraps his body with red flames and then strikes again. His strikes were much more effective now and he kills another wave of the red scale beast in just half an hour. Then the fourth wave appears and the beasts were getting stronger. They had been upgraded to primary lord level. Although there was a killing field, the problem was that the number of red scaled beasts was too huge and they were still at the lord level. Lin Yuan feels like with his current strength, he was still somewhat inadequate for the job. He was not ready to give up but his goal there was already achieved. So, he decides to retreat. Zio informs him that he had successfully break through to the Lord level and had created two new moves, Killing Shock and Killing Blood Armor. Lin Yuan was still not satisfied. He wanted to visit the Killing Realm again. Then he feels like there was someone behind him. So, he turns around to check who it was. It was no one else but just the hotel staff who had brought Sokni food for him. He was really sacred by the way Lin Yuan reacted to him. Lin Yuan then tells him to ease off and thanks him for his help. He asks him to show him the shower area. The staff Huang was terrified by the killer aura that Lin Yuan was emitting. Then after full completion of the medical bath, Lin Yuan returns to his hotel where Jin Zi was busy extracting information. He asks Lin Yuan how was his medicinal bath. Lin Yuan replies that he has almost recovered from the damage he took. He tells Jin Zi to thanks his father as he helped him so much. Jin Zi replies that his father Hang Ting have a lot of expectation from him. Then Lin Yuan asks him what was he doing in his laptop. Jin Zi shows him the new arena rules. The new arena competition was divided into three stages. To put it simply, 10 teams draws lots to compete in pairs. The winning team goes into group A and the losing team goes into group B. The losing team will get to play another round. The school with the highest number will enter group A. Then Jin Zi further explain Lin Yuan all the rules regarding the game. At last three teams and enter the final round and after a lot of competition in the group B, the winning team will join group A thus, three teams from group A and one team from group B will compete for the first place. Jin Z tells him that they were currently ranked fourth in points and the probability of being promoted to the next group was not very high. If they enters the low group then the pressure of winning will be a lot higher and it will be embarrassing for their school if they does not make it to the finals. When they were trapped in the black mist, they killed so many monsters and they were not counted in the points. It was a big loss for them. Lin Yuan tells him to relax as it was their chance to turn things around. Jin Zi asks him if he knows who they drew. Lin Yuan asks him would not he draw Yan Jing Beast in the first round. Jin Zi replies that the one they drew was Jing Hang Beast University. This time they ranked third in survival battle points. They were really impressive along with their principal. Wang Ting was really pissed to see that. Lin Yan recalls the kid in talk. His name was Han Yan Tong. Then he receives a message from Zhao Shanhai his phone in which he was calling him to attend a meeting at the conference room at 2 o'clock. Thus, Lin Yuan and Jin Zi goes to the conference hall as it was already late and apologizes for it. Teacher Zhang Yu tells them that it was okay and tells them to take their seats. He knew that he had broken through to the Lord level again after not seeing him for a couple of days. When Lin Yuan sits near Wuk Xuan Gu, he taunts Lin Yuan by Yuan by he still have the nerve of coming to the meeting after defaming their school too much. Lin Yuan smiles and asks him how many Lord level beasts did he hunt. Wuk Xuan Gu replies that the number was far better than his ones. Lin Yuan tells him that it does not matter as he was just a substitute but he was the vice captain of their team. So, it was normal for him to be stronger than him. Then Wang Ting tells them all that now that everyone was there, they should start the meeting. Without wasting any time, Wang Ting informs them that the opponent they were going to face were none other than Jin Hang Beast University. He tells that his son Jin Zi will analyze the specific situation of the Beijing Hangzhou Beast. Jin Zi knew that as long as it was about information, 
His father will leave it all to him. Then Jin Zi presents his research and tells everyone that there were two players in the Hangzhou team. They were Vice Captain Feng Kai. He tells a little about Feng Kai. He was the one who fought against Chen Zhu Shan, the captain of the Shu Chu and Beast University and although he lost in the end, his strength has not been confirmed. Jin Zi smiles and suggests to send their vice captain against him since the opponent was a vice captain as well. He asks Wu Xu and Gu if he would like to do that. Wu Xu and Gu replies that if he meets him then he will surely win. But inside Wu Xu and Gu was livid as he knew that Jin Zi was doing it on purpose as he lost to Chen Zhu Shan. Wu Xu and Gu tells them that as per the format of the game, it was not easy for both of them to fight accurately. Jin Zi replies that they need to form tactics as soon as possible. Then Lin Yuan asks them if it was not that the order of the two sides gets decided on the spot. Jin Zi tells Lin Yuan that the order of the top five players must be submitted before and the bottom five players can only adapt to the situation. Lin Yuan replies that then it was indeed a tactic. Then they discusses about Han Yan Tong, captain of the Beijing Hangzhou Beast team. His beast soul was a word beast, which was a special type of beast. Its abilities were speech spells and true word creation. The strength was rated at S suspected lord level. Wu Xu and Gu asks Jin Zi if that was the information he collected as he was feeling like there was not anything useful there. Jin Zi asks him what he counts as useful, if it was their birthdays and hero scopes. Wu Xu and Gu replies that he said he was a suspected lord level beast but was just 14. It was impossible to be a lord at just 14. Jin Zi replies that just because he cannot do it himself does not mean others cannot too. But Jin Zi plays his actual combat scene in order to convince him. It seems that Han Yan Tong was destroying other monsters without even putting any effort in his human form. There was a two-headed earth dragon in front of him and in his beast form, he starts reading mantras. The mantras manifests and starts revolving around the earth dragon. Then Han Yan Tong tells the earth dragon to not move and the dragon actually stops moving. And then the 14 years old kid creates two big blades using his speech and cuts the monster in halves. That's how easily he was killing high-level monsters. Jin Zi asks the room again if anyone still doubts him. It was clearly a lord-level strength. Then Lin Yuan asks Jin Zi if the kid left without taking the monster core. Jin Zi tells him that his focus was a bit too strange. Then Wang Ting asks Chu Tiani what he thinks. Chu Tiani replies that the kid was strong but he can fight him. Hang Ting tells him that he will exclude him from the five-person list so that he can face him. Chu Tiani thanks him for the opportunity. Wang Ting knew that as long as Chu Tiani can defeat Han Yan Tong, their demon city beast master will have won half the battle. But even if Chu Tiani loses, Wang Ting still had another trump card, Lin Yuan. 